Saints fans, uh, I got Derek Carr. Man, what a great interview. I mean, like not, I don't think I did a great job, but Derek, love him. I That's why pe That's why his teammates like him. Like spend 30 minutes with the guy. You're like, yeah, I'd play with that guy. Okay, I got a question. First off, like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend if you like this interview. But my question is, of all your years being Saints fans, who's the player that wore an Atlanta uniform, a Carolina uniform, a Tampa uniform that you hate the most? If you saw him at the mall, you wouldn't even you wouldn't even take a picture with him. That kind of thing. Who is that player? Comment below. Uh, enjoy the interview. Wishing you guys luck this year. You can also leave good bar recommendations in, in uh, New Orleans because I'd like to get there soon. If I want to go somewhere where it's like locals only, where do I go? Say it's not Super Bowl weekend. All right, so we don't get a lot of quarterbacks on, so I'm excited. And this is a pretty damn good one. Derek Carr of the New Orleans Saints, guy I used to bump into every now and again on the field. Uh, he is joining us from what looks like the facility. What's going on, man? Go home. Get some rest. See your family. What's what's the deal? You know what? I, we did not win enough games, so I've been here a long time. <laughs> so I, I, got, I got more work to do. But, no, it's good to see you, man. It's been, a, good to see it's you. been way too long. I know. No question. Um, I think the last time we played was – uh week 17 in philly remember how cold it was i remember how cold that was yes yeah yes. Dude. I, <laughs> yeah, it yeah, was yeah ridiculous <laughs> reed can you cue this up we're we're gonna test something out here i've actually i've got this new technology here Derek, where i can break down film with a quarterback and i want you to tell me okay. me and marshall newhouse have talked about this am i <laughs> off sides on this first sack that they took away from me do you remember this play see. Uh, yeah, I mean, you definitely <laughs> jumped the gun a little bit. <laughs> you think so? I think you had a lean or something, dude. I think that you liked when you played at home because you knew when that center was going to snap the ball. <laughs> you figured us out, bro. We've been, you know, all that complicated stuff y'all do, we just have to look at the center and look at the play clock. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. When y'all run that play clock down, that next head yep. bob, we're going. You're so, gone, 100%. Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you, like... What's the gamesmanship like trying to get somebody to hard count? Do you admire something like when you watch Aaron Rodgers and you're like, that's the Michael Jordan of hard counts? I, I love that stuff. I think that, you know, every and every system emphasizes different things that I've been in. I've been I've been in a lot of systems and uh, two teams, but a lot of systems. And you, you learn what different people emphasize. And so, you know, when you watch a, a team that emphasizes the using the snap count as a weapon and things like that, Aaron, how many free plays he's gotten. Just based on him doing that, like, you know, he's always been so good to me. So learning from him and asking questions and all that, like, you know, stealing that. I stole a few touchdowns off free plays, you know, just just based on learning from the guys ahead of you. And so now I'm trying to teach that to these young guys and how to do it, you know, what to do with your hands, your eyes, you know, different things that make it look the exact same. So that they, they think it's the, the snap. And um, even one of my favorite throws of my life was in a Pro Bowl on a on a hard count, you know. But just you hard counted somebody in the Pro Bowl? What the heck are you I, doing out there, dude? Isn't that jacked up? I did it. Yeah, I did really, it. Just so I that's really messed down. up, dude. That's, <laughs> a, that's like breaking the bro code, I think, if there's a Pro Bowl bro code. I, but what do you do? Like, say you don't have a vertical route in the concept when you get somebody to jump. How does that go for the offense? Do you kind of know where your hot is and maybe just take the hot? Or do you just yeah. look up top? Yeah, you know, there. there's a lot of times, like, if there is something down the field, even if it's double covered, like that's the one I'm, I'm just going to throw that one up. If, if, especially if you guys are right in my face, I'm just going to throw it up, save the hit, um, all those things. You know, there was, there's times too, where, you know, I, I love to do it in a two minute drill. You're going, you're down in the red zone, the set first half, the clock's running down, man, you get them on a, get them on a hard count. And then if the touchdown's there, if not, just throw it away, you know, cause I actually had one where a guy jumped for playing Kansas city at home and I, I peaked and they didn't throw the flag. And so thankfully I didn't just throw it up, but you know, there's times like that where the refs, when it was first happening, they kind of miss them sometimes. Yeah. The two minute thing is legit. I mean, I'm, you're going to get me 10 out of 10 times yeah. in two minutes, yeah. you know, like we're, yeah. but it's an extra three seconds that might be worth it. 
you know, that's right. Kind of situation. So, um, how you like in New Orleans the area, like being on a new team, I feel like you were going to be Mr. Raider. And, um, I think everybody starts out and, and you played there so long and we're such a fixture. I remember when I left St. Louis, I wanted to be a Ram for life and the Raiders are a great organization. Was it tough for you to like now imagine yourself in a different uniform and what's that experience been like? It was really hard, you know, cause I, I mean, just, you know, with the relationship I have, you know, yeah. Mark and, you know, the, the team, the organization, I thought I was going to be there just forever, you know? Yeah. And, um, it didn't work out that way, obviously, but when I put, went to put a new Jersey on, I was like, my pants aren't silver anymore. You know, yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. it, it looked, it looked weird, you know, it didn't right? feel right. Um, but at the same time, like uh, the, the heart of it, the decision, the team, the organization, all that felt right, but it just looked funny, you know? Yeah. And so it took me, it took me a little longer than I thought to get acclimated, if I'm honest, yeah. you know, and learning everybody's name, you know, in the building, you know, I, I had relationships with everyone from the owner to the janitor in the Raiders right. building, you know, right. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, you come into a new building, I'm like learning everyone's name and where do I go for stretch? You know, what, when do we do this? What do we, who sits here? You know, like I don't mm -hmm. want to take cam jordan's seat day one you know definitely uh, not him right you know <laughs> i'm trying to start off or right demario so. davis dude i feel like demario <laughs> davis might be the worst guy to take his seat <laughs> yes. guy's kind of scary yeah. you know he's kind of a badass <laughs> absolutely and so all of those things you know it's just new and it, it took me a while if i'm honest but now like i just feel at home like i yeah like it feels like my team feels like you know you know i'm there with the leaders that we have and we're leading together and it doesn't feel like I'm trying to catch up. It feels like we're we're here together and we're pulling everybody, you know, there with us. And so um, that part of it feels more way more at home this year for sure. How long does it take to get that feeling? Because um, last year was a work in progress for in a lot of ways, but also your your shoulder, right? Like I think when people say when you return to play, they think, oh, he's healthy. Um, how long does did that particular injury linger and um, and how difficult did that make it? Yeah, I mean, I did. So I, I ended up breaking two ribs and then had obviously something with my shoulder. And I didn't feel good until probably two weeks before we came back in April. And so, like, I was getting, you know, getting the shot to make to be able to throw. You know, if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be able to throw. And um, there was a lot of stuff and, you know, man, no excuses. Like you got to go perform, you got to go try and win and all that. And I just came just like you did. I was raised different. Like if, if it works, like I'm going to be out there, you know, even if it's not putting my best foot forward, you know, you hear about some people getting a growing or a hammy nowadays and it's like, Hey, it's two weeks. And really it takes them four. you know, like to me, like, I was like, if I can be out there for my guys, no matter what, even if, even if I'm not at my best, I still feel like I can help us win, you know, and I'm just going to be out there no matter what it puts out on the tape. And so I, I guess I'm like right on that cusp of the older generation of how like we dealt with things. And so it's a really fine dynamic of, you know, watching that happen, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't have traded it for anything because now my guys know that no matter what I'm dealing with, I mean, I got teammates walking by and I'm getting shots here, shots here. And you know, that, that, that stuff right there just shows them that I'll do anything for them. And you know, it, it sucks to go through, but it also shows my team like, man, we're like, dude, this guy, will, he'll do anything to help us win. And, you know, it, it builds that relationship. You're known to have, you know, big arm, be able to make the throws. But when you're banged up, how nice is it to be in a system or with a group of guys rather more than anything? Because I just think when the quick game's going for you guys with, with Alvin out of the backfield and um, the speed you have outside, how nice is it to have? you know, that kind of option, a style of play. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. You know, and the way, you know, you, I, I got to learn so much just by watching Drew in the film, you know, run the offense and the decisions he's making to AK and this kind of thing. And, and so it really helped me last year, especially when I was banged up that, man, I can, I know that I have that guy in AK that I can get that, that ball to just out leverage. And instead of a two yard gain, it's really nine yards with AK, you know, and, you know, that kind of stuff really helped. And, you know, with Chris and Rashid in the quick game, obviously that stuff helped us a lot, you know, because we had to call more of that stuff based on some of the health that I was dealing with. How important is it to have a differentiating body type, like a big target that you can throw to, you know, like, or, a, you know, Juwan or something like a tight end, but a guy who yeah. can actually create in space and has the size. 
Yeah, with, with like guys like AT and Jawan, you know, they allow me to make throws that you typically can't make with a smaller guy, right? Like, you know, if a guy is on his shoulder, well, I can, I can throw it, you know, way back here on a back shoulder ball, and I know that they're going to go get it, you know. And AT was that jump ball, back shoulder, big body guy. Jawan also down the field, down the middle, making those, those plays that you love to throw as a quarterback that you just – you can't throw to everyone based on what they were given at birth, you know, and, you know, those, those are guys that down the stretch for me, um, you know, I've always loved having a guy like that. You know, you, you know, you have your starters, you know, and you have your guys that have roles and they fit that role and just my style of play to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one guy that I can make that throw to. And, and they came down with most of them. So you trust them that trust builds for sure. Yeah. Oh, the, the thing behind you, the calendar. Okay. Yeah. This is a relevant question. Uh, yeah right now because the PA is talking about changing the, the schedule on us, which is wild because, all right, I don't know how you feel about it, but we were talking about like being routine oriented as football players. Like, where do we stretch? Where do we, like, we're the same way with our schedule. You know, it's this time of the year. This is what I do. This is when we get together. For offensive players, especially, and for quarterback, like installations, the whole thing. First off, how did you feel when you heard they might change the schedule earlier training camp, maybe sometime in June? maybe early in July, doing away with the voluntary stuff. And then second, how would that affect how you do your job? Yeah, I think uh, my answer may, I don't know how everyone else feels about it. I, I really haven't kept up, but it may be unpopular. But I think the skill that it takes to play all of our positions would go down because you have less time on task. I don't know. Like as a quarterback, your timing, your rhythm, uh, your accuracy, all of that in April isn't at its best, you know, but you, you use these practices and these OTAs to get there. And then you get a little bit of a break, which I've always found nice for my family, you know, to have that time where I'm still working, I'm still throwing, but I still have time to go take my kids to hit balls. I still can take them golfing. I can still do those things before it really ramps up. And I mean, the NFL season's already long and you're going to start it a month earlier to me. I mean, I think for young guys too, that would be hard. Um, you know, I just, there's so much that the young players have to learn in my opinion, again, it's all my opinion, but so much that they have to learn where I think OTAs are beneficial again. Now that's coming from a guy who's been doing this 11 years and I may have an old school, older school of thinking. Um, but just the skill it takes and the, the time on task, I, you know, especially as coaches, I mean, they're going to be stressed out of their mind, getting guys ready to play, <laughs> you know? So, um, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I think I think it I mean, we if we're honest with ourselves, the job that we have is pretty unbelievable, you know, um, even with how it, the schedule is now. And so I enjoy being here with my teammates. You know, if you there's a lot of guys you and I have probably both played with um, where you're like, you were really going to give that guy until the beginning of July off. <laughs> you know? Right. You're like, just not going to see that guy. <laughs> like yeah. nobody's going to check in like he doesn't have to come in the building. I, I'm with so, you. I. I think the popular take from players is going to be it could be pretty disruptive. And, like, listen, there are varying degrees of needing OTAs. Like, the guys in the offensive room need a lot more. The guys in coverage need a lot more. The guys yeah. in the defensive line room, we got to go through our stuff. But it's also good to get to know each other. It's good to bring the rookies along. And it's good to get together. You think about these teams that are trying to repeat. It's going to be really hard to repeat and, and stay good if you can't build the culture of your team through the calendar year and for coaches they're going to be miserable like i bet coaches would hate this like they love being out on the boat in the summer they get that three-week period where for once they don't have to sleep in the facility you know what i mean i think it would be majorly disruptive yes yes i, <laughs> I, I think i think just the the overall excellence of our game and the as as you know because we play you know like there's so much fine detail and skill that is involved along with the physicality that yeah. it, you can't just get that with an extra two week training camp, you know, like, no, this is a, a I'd be okay with thing. 10 more days of training camp. And I sound crazy yeah. and old school. But I came in when it was two days, but there's a way to ramp up in a safe way, but you need yes. the time. Cause nowadays, if you play in that hall of fame game, dude, I don't know if you ever played in that, but yes. it's coming like right now, like yes. you get, you get in the building, you get your syllabus, for yeah. for the training camp, you get your calendar, and you're like, damn, uh, shell, shell, shells, pads, 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 Canton. Yes. Like that's that's too fast. You know what I yeah. mean? 
Yep. Um, so I agree with them on that. But anyways, okay, let's talk about your schedule this year. Dallas and KC early on the road, man. Like I know they're all tough, but tough place to play, tough defenses. Um, what goes into getting an offense ready to go early and communicate and, and be ready for the stress level of a place like Arrowhead? Oh man, you know that it's now that I'm not a Raider, I can finally say it's one of my favorite places to play. Yeah, I was going to say, know? yeah, you probably could, but <laughs> the place is amazing. Uh, it's amazing, man. And there's yeah. always one guy for the last 11 years that yells at me. And whether we've beat them or they're beating us, we have a good relationship. You know, I had a guy and, like that in Seattle. He <laughs> yes, was right in the tunnel. Same. He was hanging over the tunnel. He was that guy is amazing. You know the guy He's, I'm talking about in Seattle. 100 percent he's there every time he knows the everything left side. about you yep but yeah he's the he is the man <laughs> yes i love that guy because he'll talk to you and he'll he'll talk trash but then at the end of the game he daps you up and usually it was after yep. a loss for us but but the yeah. last game we were 0 for 6 i went uh, we won the seventh time and it was my last time playing there and i said goodbye to the guy and everything this is so funny you remember this guy yes oh absolutely he's a good dude I, i've yeah. had great conversations with him mm. and so that's uh, cool we uh, so yeah, Kansas City, Dallas is two places I've thankfully I've I've been able to go and win at yeah. their buildings. Um, you know, Kansas City, you know, they've gotten after us a lot <laughs> there, and so you I've seen both sides of it. But you really, it's the work <laughs> that we just talked about OTA. It's the work we're doing now, the communication, the little details of the assignment, the timing, all of those things. That when you get into a hostile environment. That's all you all you got is your thoughts. And so if your thoughts are scattered and your brain isn't on the right stuff, then that's where teams go out in there and you get blown out, you know. But if you're on your details, you know, anytime, you know, I can go to those games where we won in those places, like our details were money, you know, everyone's assignments are on on point. And that's what it takes to beat those teams in their place because they're two amazing defenses and teams. I feel like just watching on the sideline, being stressed out, watching an offense on the road, try to do what they do. It's about like starting fast and it's about conversions. Yep. Like those two yep. things on the road to me, what else do you think are the keys when you go on yep. the road? You know, I think you hit it on the head. I think if you start fast, you can kind of take the crowd out of it at the beginning, you know, cause you get up, you go, go get, go down, get a field goal, go down, get a touchdown. You know, it's like, oh crap. You know, that, that second drive, you come out, it's not bump, buzzing as loud as if it was a third down sack to end it, you know? And, you know, same thing, moving the chains on third down, you know, if you can sustain a good drive, but if you can, if you can convert on third down, you know, the, 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 uh, yep. uh, yep. they get tired know. of that. They get tired of that after the fifth conversion on a drive, yep. it's kind of quiet. It does. And yeah. and so for me, it's staying efficient on first and second down are absolutely key because if you can get in the third of manageables, you know, obviously the percentages are higher. You can get them. Like that, that's where you can get a first down and take them out of it again. And then those next two downs, as you know, it's dead silent. And so, uh, yeah. Do you prefer when you get the ball to receive on the road, you know, or do you prefer let the defense do it? Because I'm just saying this, no offense to offensive players, but I'd rather we kick, you know what I mean? That yeah. a three and out on the road in a hostile environment to start a game is like a death sentence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. At 100, especially against the uh, offenses like Dallas and Kansas City. You know, yes. Like, yeah, they're unbelievable teams. And so yeah. for for me, I've always I've always begged the head coach. You know how these analytics are now, but I've always like, give us the ball, you know, <laughs> and they're like, yeah, I we're you defer. say that. I respect it. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah they're like, oh, go out there and defer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, let me let me go out there. I want to play, you know. Uh, and so you know, I'm all I'm all amped up. And yeah. I was like, yeah, honestly, I want to get the first hit out of the way. Like, I don't want to yeah. sit here for another 15 mm-hmm. minutes while they're mm-hmm. on offense. Like, let's go. Yeah, play. that's true. That's true too. Okay, so you got week 17. You got the Raiders. Yeah, at home, right in New Orleans, right? It's in New Orleans. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So Max Crosby's coming to town. Yep. Is he going to call you little ass boy or medium boy or what, what, what do you think he's got? What do you think Max has got up his sleeve for you? Uh, one thing I know about Max is he's a psychopath. And yes, so he he's going to be, he's going to want to rip my head off, but he's still one of my best friends. Like we bought each other, you know, di- he bought me this diamond chain DC four chain oh, nice, you know, dude. for Christmas. I got him a, a 98 silver and black chain, you know, like, oh, we, I mean, we're good friends, but obviously have I know you Max, checked you the retail value of your chain. Uh, I have, I have not just out of respect. Um, 
you yeah. know, of him just buying that gift. I didn't want to know, but you know it may not be a bad idea to, yeah, no, to know honestly, what that is. rainy day kind of thing, dude. <laughs> you might want to get that thing insured. Yeah, you just should get in that case. insured, dude. You got to get your chains insured. I'm pretty sure Kirko's got his chains insured, bro. One hundred percent. So I, I, was like, I may actually wear that. I may wear that one that week to the game just because he bought it for me. It'd be hilarious, dude. Do that, please. If you wear that chain to the game, oh my god, that'd be incredible. Okay. Um, yes. With, with the Raiders, man, like you still got people you 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 vibe with there when you see them and and the whole thing. You spend so much time there. I, I remember I'm, my first year in uh, New England. We played the Rams. I went back to the Rams locker room after the game. Like my boys were like, "Get back here," and I was like, "This is weird," but I'm going back because we're we're brothers, man. Um, is that going to be a tough? weekend or one you look forward to um and how hard is it going to be to just laser focus on the task you know it's you know because of uh you know ap's the head coach i love ap he was great to me and i, I enjoyed my time with him and you know because he's the head coach and there's different people in the building and you know i know aiden you know love aiden love Devonte's one of my best friends you know max same thing you know like these are these are like my real friends you know and so there's no like hatred, like even Raider Nation. Like I love Raider Nation. I still see, I sign Raider jerseys and hats everywhere I go still. And you know, that their love for me is, you know, been unbelievable even since I left. You know, I got people always saying, man, we still root for you. We, we watch your games and then we watch the Raider games, you know? And so like that to me, like there's no like, oh, I hate these guys kind of rivalry. Like it's just going to be like, it's going to be weird. It's going to be like, it's going to feel like a practice because I'm so used to seeing them on defense, you know, uh, you know, but this time it's it counts. And so it'll be it'll be fun uh, just to go against those guys, but it won't be like a very emotional week for me. So who talked the most trash to you in practice that you're going to try to get after? Oh, Max, 100 percent, Max. Oh, we used to <laughs> okay. yell at each other. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's great. Oh, yeah. OK, yeah. Um, with with Rich, man, I, I know it's been a couple years since he had his shot and I think, you know, they're in a great place now because they ironically have a guy that I think has some similar qualities. Yep. But to me, that guy should have a chance to be a head coach. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to complain for you, but that call in Cincy, the, the way you guys rallied, it, just as a player, I watched and I was like, yeah, he's got this team. And um, I wonder if you could speak to like your hopes to see him pop up again or if you yeah. think that's possible. Yeah, absolutely. Like everybody on that team, you know, first time with an interim coach making the playoffs, you know, all this kind of stuff. And we had to win like our last four or something like that to get in and all that, everything that led up to that and the moments that we had and the wins, like he absolutely had the heart and soul of our team. Like he had us, we would do anything for him. And, you know, going into that next year, I was like, me, you know, I'm going to try and get Devonte here, you know, I'll get, just add Tay to this and like, let's just keep it rolling, you know? And then, uh, that's not what they decided. You know, all of us players let it known. We want rich, you know, and that's, that's what we wanted. But obviously people have to make decisions that, you know, it's not our decision to make. And so, um, but with that said, he 100% is a head coach in this league. He needs to be a head coach in this league. And anybody that gives him a chance to be a head coach would, you know, one thing is you'll, your, your players, you'll get, he'll get the most out of them. You know, he'll get the most out of them and you would never regret hiring Rich Passaccia as your head coach. He's one of my all time favorite coaches I've ever had. Yeah. Everybody, every player I ever talked to, sometimes you think it, it, it's it got to be that simple. Doesn't it a little bit, if the team's winning <laughs> and the players love the coach, he deserves a shot. Um, yep. How about this Fuaga kid? Have you guys gotten yep. to know each other a little bit? Oh yeah, absolutely. What do you oh, think? Yeah, he's, He's uh he's one of those alignmen you probably wouldn't like. He's just angry, you know, yeah, violent, through extra the, through the echo of the whistle. <laughs> yeah, extra a little bit, and it's everything as a quarterback you want, you know. Yeah, uh, exactly. You know, I, you want him to be nasty, you know, a little little Richie incognito in him. You, you know? need Rich. one of those on every O line, and I was gonna say Richie would have been the one that came to mind on your Raider teams. That's right, and Richie mm -hmm. again, also a good golfer. Richie, big guy, yeah, pretty funny guy to watch golf. <laughs> He's just a funny yeah. guy in general, man. Uh, he is, but but, but yeah. when the the switch flips, it's not it's very different. funny. Oh, it's not funny, and that's a lot of man. Mean, a lot of man, strong, 
very strong, strong and does not want anybody touching me. <laughs> no, when I was training in Manhattan Beach and my brother was there too for the off season and Richie was there, I yep. came home to my apartment one day and there was a loud crash and I was like, somebody broke into the apartment and I walk upstairs and Richie and Kyle are wrestling in the living room <laughs> and I'm like, guys, we are not going to get, I'm, the, the deposit is gone. Like it yes, was like King Kong course. versus Godzilla. <laughs> I don't even know how to handicap it. Yeah. Of course, like, <laughs> of course they were. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's like, this is what they're doing all day. So yeah, you don't even have to tell me and I played with Richie. Um, how about Clint Kubiak and, um, you know, the, the change coming and, you know, you've talked about being somebody who's played for a lot of coordinators, even though you're on one team, what is the, the most important skill that it takes to pick up a new system? And then how excited are you to pick this one up? Yeah, it's really the time that you spend on it, you know, yeah. whether you're here at the building, when I go, when I go home, I play with my kids, hit a couple golf balls for like 30 minutes. And then I'm like, yeah. I got to get back to studying, you know, yeah. and it's, you got to put that time. You have to put that time in or else you're going to be behind the eight ball of a Kansas city or a Dallas. You know, it's, you're not just competing against your room. It's like, we're competing against teams that have been in their system for a while. And it's a, it's a great challenge for us. But the one thing I've learned is it's the time you put into it. And so, um, really just being able to become a coach on the field, you know, especially at quarterback, you know, I know guys aren't going to know everything. Well, I got to, I'm, I'm talking with my hands. It's you guys got this, you guys got this in the huddle, you know, just pointing so that it kind of eases some, you know, some, some anxiety for the receivers or the tight ends, you know, just, and so there was a lot, I've spent, I've been spending a lot of time just trying to be able to get to that level of excellence so I can help our team get there faster. And so, um, Clint's a, an amazing teacher. I'll say this about him. He's an amazing teacher. He's an even better person um, when you're around him. And he holds me to such a high standard every day. Like I threw one today. You know, I was like, oh, that's a great ball. I come off. He's like, yeah, just, just a little bit. I need it sooner, sooner. And I'm like, you know what? That's freaking awesome because you're going to push me to be try and be perfect. And so for for me as a as a veteran player, that's all you can ask for. Just keep pushing me. Keep keep telling me what you need from me, and I'll try my best to do it. And that sounds like uh, a good marriage to me. Um, I thought yeah. I did that right. No, it was almost perfect, babe. <laughs> you right. know, that's you need right. somebody to, <laughs> that's right. to do, even when you were riding high, just to give you that little bit of constructive uh -huh. criticism. You know well, what I mean? One hundred percent. Just <laughs> yeah. And and the one thing I love about it is like I don't ever want to be comfortable. You know, yeah, I'm, yeah. I, you know, as a player, I've learned, especially as I get older, like make me uncomfortable, whatever, whatever I do. So then game day is just like, whatever, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what advice would you have for young quarterbacks? Like these rookies now, they got so much pressure on them. Um, you know, I, I, I feel like I know who they are two, two, three years before they get drafted. We're counting down. What advice would you give them? You were a high pick. Um, you had success. Uh, what does it take? Yeah, I would, I always say this, I was like, you gotta, you know, you're going to be praised and you're going to be criticized, ignore both. Cause neither matter, you right. know, like, yeah. I don't care if you go out there and you go seven for seven in your team drill, like it doesn't matter. Do it again. You know, I don't care if you go out there and you throw, you know, two picks, you know, in practice, you know, like get over it. It doesn't matter. Keep learning, keep growing, keep pushing yourself and, and stay, keep that, you know, you got to keep your mindset like I, I can I'm the best. You got to keep that mindset of no one can stop me because this game, as you know, man, it can bring anybody down. You know, it's tough. It's hard. You know, we got you know, we got uh, players talking about uh, football stuff, ex players talking about football. We got media. You got this. And it's like everyone has something to say and everyone's you know putting their opinions. And it's like, well, which one do I listen to as a young guy? And which one? It's like, you know what? whether they're saying good stuff or bad stuff, it's okay. Like just move on and keep working, you know, like they're, they got a job to do just like you have a job to do. And I think that that's the best advice, especially for this generation that I can give is, you know, like one of our, one of our young guys, he, he threw two passes. He probably didn't want, or, you know, like that, I'm like, bro, who I'm the first one. I walked straight to him. Who freaking cares? Throw, rip the next one. You know, that's how you're going to get better. And so I had a guy in Matt Schaub that did that for me. Matt, like, I yeah. would make him, I, I would make a mistake and be like, dude, who cares? Throw the next one, rip it. Yeah. And it gave me confidence to just be me every day. And it, who's the, who's the rookie? You got Rattler down there. So we got Rattler and then Hayner was a rookie last year. You like Rattler a lot. He's a good kid. 
Oh been, yeah. The, him, been bothering you are, for advice nonstop. I hope asking a lot of questions and good. And, we like as a veteran, that ask questions as a veteran. You, that's all you want, man. Yeah. Like just, he has so much respect. He's like for, you know, for what, what I've done and you know, the yeah. things that I've been able to do, which I haven't done everything I want to do, but I've done a lot and of you've stuff. Been there. You've seen a lot. Yeah. yeah. And so, and, so and he should ask questions. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, I asked a million. And so yeah. to see him be that hungry and see Jake be that hungry, like as a as a veteran, it just helps our team because I'm like, dude, this is awesome. You know, yeah. and yeah. They, they, they are great people, um, great teammates, great leaders. And so I'm excited for their future. They're going to be good players. Okay, who are some of the players in division one year in on defense that you're like, that guy doesn't get enough credit or I notice this guy when I turn on film? Yeah, I would say J.C. Horn is an amazing corner. Now, I know everyone was high on him and he had the injuries and things like that, but when he's out there, man, that guy, that guy's an unbelievable football player. Man, you know, uh, I, I absolutely love love watching him play. Jesse Bates doesn't get enough credit. He, 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 had a pick, he had a pick six on me last year where he was the middle field safety in the red zone. We ran a choice route. Never in my life on a choice route am I thinking about the middle field safety. This dude... I, I put my eyes on him. He's in the middle. I go to throw the choice and he picks it off. And I'm like, what the heck? Like no one, no one does that, <laughs> you know? So, well, you weren't he, the only one. He, <laughs> he got a few people last year. Um, yes. he's pretty incredible. So yeah, um, Jesse, he's unbelievable. And, and yeah. you know, an older player, doesn't get enough credit, which of course he gets credit, but I don't think enough. Tell right? me the team. Like, I'll try to guess. Tell me the team. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Older player. Well, now he's in Detroit. Are we talking about the corner? No, I like no. Carlton. Okay. No, All I right, like shoot. him too. Well, Levante David to me should be yes. talked about like one of the best he's players of our generation. 100%. He's, he is unbelievable. I, I mean, I've been playing him since college, but he is like the instincts. He, he's beating people to the ball on the backside that he should not be beating to the ball because he knows the play. He sees it. And like the stuff, you know, you know how that goes, man. Like, his Madden rating is whatever, but like, you know, it should be no. even higher. Yeah. You know, he's like, Hey, hey dude, you're, <laughs> you, you, this is a perfect segue. Cause my, my last question for you <laughs> is I'm trying to be a damn good Madden player. Okay. I took like 10 yeah. years off Then yeah. I picked the game up this fall. I played, don't tell my wife, but like 200 something games. <laughs> and I love it because what it does is it teaches you the back end in ways you didn't see when you played, if you're a lineman. Yeah. I always knew what cover two, cover three. I knew that stuff. Cover four. Great. Yeah. I know when we're in man. Okay. Rush lanes. Got it. Yeah. Like, let me, yeah. let me put my hand in the dirt. Now yeah. I'm learning. So when I'm controlling Derek Carr and I do, because I like playing with the saints. Yeah. How do I, how do like the ball snap? How should I look at the field? It depends. Obviously it depends. There's, that's a big question, but on Madden. Yeah, give me, give me, give me, give me all the information. I'm Spencer say Rattler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would say just find the safeties. Yeah, find the safety because in Madden they're going to tell the story. You know they do. Yeah. I, I will say this: Madden does a good job of showing coverages. Like yes, like I know it sounds funny, but I would be like I would teach guys coverages off of Madden. I've taught my nephews coverages off I'm of Madden. Telling you, dude, they yeah. do a really good job. I will give them credit. Uh, and and so I would say just see the safeties. Yeah. And when in doubt, if you're playing with the Saints, it's always okay to check it down to AK. That's Dude, I run decision. tons of angle routes with, with <laughs> AK. If somebody, and then somebody will be in robber and as a reaction, <laughs> and then I hit yep. the corner. And yep. so now I feel the like safeties. Derek Carr, dude. Uh, it's great. Like, it really is fun to play the game. So, okay. Absolutely. So, yeah, I see the safeties. And we'll talk offline. I want to get the whole download on how to beat everybody in the game. Okay. 100%. So, all right, yes. good. Well, Derek, appreciate the time, dude, and uh, wishing you the best of luck this year and hope you come Thank come you. back after a win, man. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Anything for you. Appreciate you I and appreciate your family, you, always. Yeah, likewise. Yeah.